In this video, I'm going to show you how to solve the Alex problem writing a standard formation reaction. There are some pretty strict rules that we have to follow when we're writing an equation to describe a standard formation reaction, so that's really what I'm going to focus on in this video. Now, um, the problem is going to ask you to write a balanced chemical equation for the standard formation of a particular compound. That means that this compound here is the product of this standard formation reaction. So we're going to begin by writing this compound on the products side, Fe2. O3 in this case. And you absolutely have to remember to include the state of matter. The problem is telling us that we're forming a solid Fe2O3. This is going to be the only product of this particular reaction. So that's one of the rules of a standard formation reaction. The other rule of the standard formation reaction is that the stoichiometric coefficient of this particular product absolutely has to be 1. So important, in fact, I'm just going to write that in. So in a standard formation reaction, the stoichiometric coefficient of the product is always going to be 1. On the reactant side, we have to predict and pick what the reactants will be. The standard formation reaction is showing the formation of, in this case, Fe2O3, from the elements iron and oxygen in what we say is their natural state, meaning the way that they're found in nature. For metals like iron, the natural state of these substances are just a single atom in the solid state. So if we have a metal like iron, it's going to be, its natural state is going to be just one single atom. There's going to be no coefficients down here at all, and it's going to be in the solid state. For most of the gases, the only exception will be the noble gases. For most of the gases, like oxygen, their natural state is diatomic, meaning that they exist as O2. Um, another example would be H2 or N2 or Cl2. Diatomic, meaning that their little subscript here is going to be a 2, and they are in the gas state, again, because they're gases. So these are the natural states of the elements that are used to form this Fe2O3. Um, so the last thing that we have to do is balance this chemical equation, but we're not just balancing it the way that we would normally balance equations because we are restricted over here with this stoichiometric coefficient of 1. We can't change this coefficient at all. So we have to come up with coefficients for the iron and the O2 that are going to make this equation balance when we have this stock coefficient of 1. For the iron, it's not that tricky. We know that we need two total iron atoms, so we're just going to put a stoichiometric coefficient of 2 right here. But for the oxygen, it's a little bit trickier. Because of this 1, we need a total of 3 oxygen atoms in our product, and our reactant comes with 2. And this is, you know, kind of an incompatibility because we have an even number of oxygen atoms on the left and an odd number of oxygen atoms on the right. We are allowed to use fractions as stoichiometric coefficients in these equations, and that's what we're going to have to do uh, pretty frequently, especially when we're dealing with gases. So 3 halves of an oxygen molecule, each oxygen molecule has two oxygen atoms, gives us a total of three oxygen atoms, which is exactly what we need. This is the balanced chemical equation for the standard formation of solid iron three oxide.